everybody! Hello! Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri, and our next guest is the star of one of my favorite new shows by some of my favorite show creators, Michelle and Robert King's Evil. In it, Katja Herbers plays a clinical psychologist working with a priest in training and a blue-collar contractor to investigate supernatural experiences. But it's about so, so, so much more than that. Let's take a look at Evil. Everybody, please put your hands together for Katja Herbers! <laughs> Saying it right? Saying it right, right? Hey. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm such a fan of this show. Oh, thank you. Uh, we talked about the show uh, about a month ago at the Comic-Con panel. I had seen the first three. And the show just gets better and better with each episode. Um, what was it like for you landing this part? I mean, this is kind of a dream job in television with these two established, amazing show creators on something like this. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel incredibly lucky. Uh, they just gave me the role. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't have to do anything. They just gave it to you. They were just like, do you want to play this role? And I was like, uh, yeah, wow. I do. <laughs> and so had they seen yeah. you on, on Westworld? I mean, I'm assuming. Right. I'm assuming I'm they assuming. saw me saw somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. wasn't just like, find me an actress and give her the role. No, I, I mean, I guess, yeah. Well, you're one, I mean, you're wonderful in this part. What Thank did you, you know about the show when you first started? Because when I first saw the trailers for it, I was like, what are they doing? This seems... And then even when I watched the first episode, it wasn't until about, like, the end of the first act mm -hmm. that I got that it was the two of them running the room, you know? Right. Prior to that, I was like, this feels like a sort of procedural mm -hmm. uh, of some kind. But then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, there's the twist where the demon starts talking in a very uh, in a loquacious way. And I was like, okay, now we're in their territory. Yeah. I read an article the other day describing our show as batshit TV. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's probably right. We're sort of a jam-packed, weird, thrilling ride of scary stuff and sometimes it's very kooky and funny. Um, Somehow all butting up against each other and working. Yeah, I, th I think so. And every script I read, uh, it just gets weirder and, and more complex and fuller and, yeah. Uh, what is it like for you to... Cause it, while it is a procedural, it is also establishing arcs over the course of the whole season. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of follow those arcs and track them within the procedural element? Um, well, it's, it's sometimes it's a little bit hard because we shoot out of order. So mm -hmm. sometimes when I when we begin at the end of an episode, it's uh, I, I sometimes wish we would I would do the beginning first so I'd know how to pitch the end better or. But, um, but you're still doing like an episode every uh, yeah, two yeah. weeks. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, um, I think our, our show is becoming more and more a character driven show the further we come along. Like it becomes less of a. We do have a procedural element, but a lot of the storylines you'll see as the season progresses will come back. So, uh, for instance, the Rose 360 character the, the, in the computer game, I just read an episode where th she's back. So uh, I, I think it's very much a show to watch in order if you can, because you'll miss out on um, the story if, if yeah. you don't. Yeah. Right. You can't just sort of. No, dive it's in not like oh, what was SVU Law and Order? We'll just watch this case. No, we're, there's. Yet it still has yeah. the satisfaction. I think on an episode per episode basis, where right. like I think oftentimes. Uh, television in this landscape for whatever reason thinks that they only have to tell one story for a season and it's like no you still have to tell a story per at least one story per episode yeah. to make the episode satisfying yeah yeah and evil does that I think so yeah. um one of the things that it does that I, I'm, I'm a fan of as well, and it's not in really in every episode, but it's this idea that sometimes evil isn't supernatural. Sometimes evil, it, we're not looking at it because it's a very uh, subtle or not subtle, but something that we're so used to in terms of a part of the systems that with which we with which we live. Were you surprised by that element? Did they talk to you about that going into it? Um, you mean that it's not all supernatural? Yeah, like, I mean, for instance, there is the episode, I think it's the second episode, where you are investigating something at a hospital, and it ends up being very much about racial discrimination, but nobody's looking at that because they're looking for ghosts, yet this other thing is right under their, right in front of them. And then the same thing is kind of happens with the Broadway producer in the yeah. episode after, yeah. where he's, like, something else has happened, it's not really about yeah. the supernatural or the possessed. Yeah. No, I think I think we're on a on a good fifty fifty basis probably. And what I like about um, David's character, played by Mike Coulter, is that um, 
he he wants to first look at the science and the psychology, make sure that there's you know that that we've covered everything there before we consider a demonic possession or anything supernatural at play. Yeah, you always get close to believing it might be supernatural. I feel like. Well, he does. I mean, I don't. Maybe maybe a little bit. Sometimes. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, were you surprised that the show actually would contain? Uh, theological arguments <laughs> with within these Me plot lines. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, show, it's a it's a show on CBS at ten. Uh, you know, what time is it on? Ten ten p.m. Ten p.m. And yeah. There are actual debates about the belief in God. And, yeah. And, and how religions deal with with, yeah. with spirituality and, and ghosts. I think it's it's pretty special to have that on TV. And I mean, I'm I'm not from this country, so I don't really know the the significance of something being on CBS versus being on on HBO or. But I, I understand right, that being on. A, I'm I'm from Holland. Right. So you have like Lars von Trier in the kingdom. And basically, anything can go on television. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, it's a very secular country. So I mean, I, I didn't grow up with religion at all. Where whereas here, obviously, you know, it's on the money. In God we trust, and um, may God bless America. And so it's a very prominent thing in this in this country. Um, so I think it's good that we're talking about it. Yeah. Do you you said that you were cast? Uh, they just offered you the role. Was uh, were there any chemistry reads between you and like Mike or anything like that? Because the two of you have incredible chemistry on screen. Yeah, they wanted me to do it, but I I said I wouldn't because <laughs> I was busy, and that worked. <laughs> Sometimes when when you when you pretend to be super important, they actually think you are. <laughs> <laughs> Were you busy? I was actually shooting oh. a movie in Holland, and they wanted me okay. to fly out here. I was like, it's just not possible. But, I mean, uh, yeah, it worked out. Mike jokes around saying that it's a really good arranged marriage because we did not know each other at all, nor did we know if we would have any chemistry. But I keep telling him that I could do it with anyone. It has nothing to do with him. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> is, is, do you believe, is that true? It's part of the technique, but I do really like him. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Did the two of you find that you had chemistry when you started doing scenes, or really is it just kind of acting? And because he's not annoying and you like him, you can base you can. Oh, he's very him. annoying. Oh, he is very <laughs> annoying. It's part of the chemistry that we find each other incredibly annoying. Probably no, we we goof around a lot. I think that helps. And and Asif, Mike, and I immediately um, started a group text, and which means deep friendship, I guess, in, in this day and age. And that is true. Actors <laughs> come on stage and say that all the time. Oh, we have a group text. I'm like, yeah, okay. no, yeah. That could just be to schedule and plan things. That doesn't necessarily mean friendship. No, we, yeah, no. Um, no, it worked out really well. I do think that chemistry is an interesting thing. It definitely helps if you if you like someone and you can uh, humor. For me, is very important, uh, and it just makes can get you a little twinkle in the eye or what but i can also fake it are you are, <laughs> are you generally a fan of like a set being fairly light and humorous the yes. majority of the time yeah 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 uh, uh, yeah I, I don't want it any other way actually have you found yourself on sets that are another way that are well, sort of serious and grim? I mean, westworld's <laughs> a fairly serious show Oh yeah, and I think maybe I was pretty serious on Westworld too because I was just freaked out and, really? and yeah, very scared. I was pretty sure I was going to get fired on my first day of work there. I was just like, I, there's no way I'm supposed to be on this show. Like I have scenes with Ed Harris. That's crazy. Okay, I'm well, just some person from Holland. Like I'm not I, supposed to be here. What was it like? I mean, speaking of serious, right? Mm. Because Ed Harris, I've heard stories about Ed Harris where he is like hilarious and amazing and mm. joking around and then i've seen footage of ed harris i'm like he is scary he's very serious what role was he playing when you saw that footage i no, i saw him in a press conference oh. for history of violence it's like a classic oh. clip where he's asked about it and he just started smashing a glass of water and being like violence oh funny and then there's an incredible story about how he bailed on the set of a movie with Jonathan Demi to go see the Talking Heads because the studio was trying to take the movie away from Demi. And he was like, I'm not going to let them do that. Let's let's get out of here. Sounds like a good guy. Yeah, he yeah. sounds amazing. What was it like working with him? I loved him. Yeah. I, he was very generous. And um, uh, I would sometimes ask him for a note, like we'd be doing the scene. And then I thought, well, I'm standing here with Ed Harris. I might as well ask him if he has you know, anything for me that I could improve on, make the scene a little better. So I thought I should just ask. So I was like... Yeah. Is there anything, you know, is there anything? And he was like, so sweet in, in giving me a note. Be like, well, maybe if, if, if you'd want to try, maybe you could. Oh. And then he'd give me a note. And he'd be like, great. Did you ever say, 
Oh, that's a bad note, Ed. He no. once told me to just, he, he actually told me not to put my face in a certain way. He said, like, it's great what you're doing, but stop doing this. And I was like, what am I doing? Because I have to be angry at him all the time. Apparently, my angry face was like, you. And he was like, it's just not a pretty look. Just drop the lip and do the same thing. I was like, okay. So you didn't yeah. get fired from Westworld, obviously. No. Uh, when did you realize through the shoot that you probably wouldn't get fired? Um, well, I left in the morning, and I and, and I said, uh, okay, I'll probably be back in an hour and a half. And then after lunch, I was like, well, this day has probably cost them, like, X amount of money. Um, they would have probably sent me home earlier. So I think after lunch, I was feeling a little better. And then you were I didn't have any lunch, obviously, because I was still very nervous. And then but. it was just coasting from there. Uh, oh, absolutely. It's just easy. I was just like, <laughs> I got this. Did you feel like because you didn't audition on uh, on Evil, mm. were you worried at all of of I mean the being first thing that you absolutely. shot was oh, the was first day of shooting right was that the first no, time well, you shot? No, well I got very nervous being fired during the camera test because okay. camera testing is just about your face and I was like, look, uh, I I think I know how to act a little bit, but I don't. This is just what it is. I don't know if they're gonna like it. And they wanted me to stand in front this of this. This is just what it is. No, but I mean, like, there's nothing you can do. That's not a talent. It's either they like it or they don't. So I was standing in front of this wallpaper, and they were making me, you know, turn 90 degrees that way, 90 degrees that way. And I was like, mm, they might really just want someone else. Right, but that's just like a pure... Um Objectification and so not in a, not in necessarily a bad way, but like you are going to be on camera. Yeah, we have to just, look at your face. Yeah, they were figuring out like what's good light for her. How do we? Which is a generally like a weird position to be in. As Super an actress, weird because right? I'm not a model and yeah. and and I don't understand what I'm doing there. So it's I like think a mug I, shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I got very uncomfortable. Yeah. And uh, what about like the first day on shoot for shooting the pilot, and then even after uh, the pilot, right? Yeah. Or was there? I forgot, was there no really, like, was this picked up to series pretty, like, right away? Or? No, no, oh. we waited. You waited. We were okay. on the group text with each other the whole time. Like, um, yeah, during the pilot, I, I was very nervous, like, first couple of days. But luckily, Robert King, one of the writers, uh, or the creator, um, he, he was directing the pilot. Right. And he he's, he's such a great guy and, and so generous and has such a good sense of humor. And I felt like he could really, well, because he wrote the character, tell me how to play it. So that was good, yeah. And he seemed to generally like you. I think so, yeah, I think, I think he likes me. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you could kind of tell, maybe not, if you're on a set, like you look around and every time you look around, the director like looks away from your eyes or something. Like, does, like oh, oh yeah. now I'm probably gonna get fired. I once had an audition like that, <laughs> where I went into a room and I did the whole scene, and by the end of the scene, the director was literally standing like this, and I was there, and I was like, he's, he's just showing me his bum. Like, I, he doesn't even want to look at me anymore. Right, he's like, that's good. Yeah, you no, go. th thank you, you but go. we'll call. We'll call you, yeah. don't call us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a bummer to have to do that. Yeah, there's a lot of rejection before you, you get a show. And now you have a show. And now I have a show. Do you like having a show? Yeah. It's much better than being rejected. <laughs> it's much better than not having a show. Oh, it's so much better than being unemployed and broke. <laughs> like, honestly, I recommend it. Get a show. Uh, but with this show, you get incredible writing. You get quirky. Quirky's not really the right word. I don't love that word. But you get offbeat writing, which yeah. you don't normally get in, in shows. Did it take you some time to sort of uh, acclimate yourself to how they write and and... And, and how they insert mm. jokes into serious scenes and seriousness into scenes that could otherwise be comedic? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm still sort of figuring it out. I know that I did a lot of comedy in Holland, and Robert and Michelle at a certain point asked me to send me some of my Dutch comedy work to understand how to, you know, how to write jokes for me. Um, it wasn't subtitled. I don't know what they got from it. Like, it was a lot of slapstick of me falling down on the floor and... and uh, is that what Dutch comedy is generally like? Yeah, just, just a lot of door slamming in your face and like heavy on the slap. Yeah, stuff. no, we love that stuff. Very <laughs> Jerry Lewis centered. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like making a fool of myself. I don't know if that's something that Kristen necessarily likes, but my favorite comedy is where I'm just stupid. But maybe because I'm leading a show, I need to be, you know, likable or, or like, I, I don't know. I, the other day I had to do a scene where I'm I'm telling, uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler, probably not, but I'm telling girls to sing a certain thing, and I like to sing it, like, I sing it much worse than I would actually sing it, be able to sing it, you know, just a bit ugly, because I think that is funny, but did I don't know if CBS likes that. Did they have to you know tell I mean? you to sing it 
norm likes to sing it better. No, I just went home and I was like, oh, did I just crack myself up? Or do they now think that I'm actually just horrible at this? <laughs> you, yeah, now you won't be cast in like Grease 2 live on CBS or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when did you start acting? How did you start acting? Um, only uh, at like 21 or something. Yeah. Really? When what what made well, you start? Well, I really wanted to when I was a child, but I thought you had to be incredibly vain to want to become an actor, and I thought that was a You're horrible trait. Incredibly train. vain? Oh, I'm so vain, <laughs> but I didn't want to tell anyone. <laughs> you know, I thought it was that's outing yourself as being a narcissistic asshole. Right. I'm constantly making fun of the idea of being narcissistic because deep down I'm, <laughs> I'm very narcissistic. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I thought it wasn't. You know, if I if I would say at ten I want to be an actor and see myself on a big screen. I didn't think that was a great, um, how do you say, a good character trait. So I didn't say anything else. I was very shy and introverted. I still am, although I'm holding a microphone. But um, uh, so it took me a while. And at first I studied psychology. And I lived in New York for, for, for a little bit. And then I went to theater school. And then I did theater in, in Germany and Belgium and Holland. And then I did some movies. And then I thought, let's try America before I'm 50. And then I got a show. And that was Westworld? <laughs> uh, no, first show I did was Manhattan about oh, the making right. of yes, the atom right. bomb. Yeah. So how long did you, how long was it you moved to New York and then you got that show? Or new Two weeks. This? Two weeks. I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, I'm not offended. I'm <laughs> no. not out there auditioning. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, but I mean, I'm offended for my own self because I know afterwards it got much harder. Like after, like in those two weeks, I'm like, what's everyone, what's the big deal? Like this is obviously very easy. I got a role. But then afterwards I was unemployed for about a year and a half. So I also know the other side of right, this. Manhattan story. lasted like a, a season, two, two seasons, seasons. Yeah. And then after when that was over, you were... Then I was just sort of like doing a couple of guesties here and there. I did. I only wanted to do my my thinking was I just want to be on shows that I want to watch because otherwise I could just as well be home with my friends and family. Right. So I didn't want to go on a show that I don't find really cool. So I won't. So I won't. You tell I, your agent that. Yeah. They're like okay, great. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. That's gonna make us some money. That's yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, she says that she doesn't want to go on shows that she doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a great way to make a living, but... And she, she says that she won't go do the chemistry test because she's yes, too busy. Yes, with Mike Coulter. Yeah, <laughs> Who Michelle wants to chemistry meet with that guy, by the way? <laughs> right? Uh, what is your favorite part about shooting in, in New York City? Because this show... Shoots all around New York City, yeah. I mean, outside of the stages. But yeah. uh, you have an incredible, your your character's home is incredible. It's under the George Washington... Br Hell's Gate? Is that George Washington? Is that it's in Queens. The, it's in Queens. Oh, it's so under it's the Triborough. I know where exactly where it is. I run over there. It's under Hell's the Triborough. Hell's Bridge. bridge. No? Okay, I'm not from this city. I, I'll, I'll grant you this. I just know that the water there there is called Hell's Gate because all the ships yeah. went down there. So it's actually super appropriate because our show's scary. That were, yeah. But it's right under the... Hell's Gate Bridge. Hell's Triboro, or whatever Triboro you want to call it. The yeah. RF, I think the <laughs> RFK Bridge, yeah. maybe? Yeah. George Washington. No, George Washington's over... A yeah, JFK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's going to... 22 minutes of the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, I know exactly what you mean. JFK, yeah, 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 yeah. Newark, yeah, yeah. Newark yeah, Airport. Over there and yeah. The story. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but what is it like shooting all, across, all around New York City? It's really cool. I want to be in Manhattan a little bit more because cause that's just so much cooler even. They're shooting on 14th Street today. I'm not you there. You don't get to be there? No. Oh. Um, but uh, no, we should swing by the set when you're done? That'd be pathetic. <laughs> right? They already know I have no life outside of the show. And then it'd be like, hi, guys. No. no. Great. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to work here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we have time for a few questions uh, from the audience. Who has a question? Right here. Hi, Kasha. Hey. Um, congratulations on getting picked up for a second season. Thank you. I want to know what it's like for you when you've got those four little girls in a scene and they're all talking at the same time. I mean, what is, like, what is that like for you? It's pretty awesome. Really? All I have to do is just receive their energy that's all. It's so easy to act with them. They're, they just can't help but be honest on camera. It's actually, it's disgusting <laughs> to look at because it's hard for adults. and we, we have to try to make it real. They just can't help but be super real. They're, they're very cute. I mean, I didn't, oh. think, I didn't think I was going to be laughing in the show. And whenever, oh, yeah. whenever you're in the scene with them and they're all talking to you at the same time, I, I'm, 
I, I try to listen to what's going on. Yeah. I can't hear it because no, I can't hear it. And nobody can that. hear it. It's all at the same time. And they're good improvisers too. Like that, I don't know if you during the pilot, one of them, the youngest child has a line where she says uh, she had a she was sleeping had a dream or something, and she's like, "My teacher punched me in the face." And then <laughs> the, my other daughter is like, "He did no such thing. That doesn't happen," or something like that. And that was just improvised. They're amazing. They're amazing. They're so much better than any of any of us. <laughs> no offense, dudes. Uh, two more. Hi, so I'm incredibly nervous, but I absolutely love the episodes that have been aired. And I wanted to know, since you have, CBS has confirmed that you guys have a second season, I was shocked because it's so early on. Mm. And now that you've talked about your track of being employed, unemployed, and how much you love having a show to yourself, I wanted to know how did you and the cast react to the news? I, I mean, I was uh, honestly I was so happy, but also very humbled. And I felt, I almost felt a little, uh, you know how you, when you get too many presents for your birthday or something, like as a child, you're just like, I, I shouldn't have eaten all this candy at the same time. I just, it took me a few days to process because I, I did, I did think we were going to get picked up maybe because it's Robert and Michelle King. And I do think the show is very good. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I, I just was a little silent on that day. I was just like, wow, okay, this happened. Sometimes that even yeah. that's not enough. You know, they did Brain Dead, which uh, oh. was a very good show, and it's them, and it was hot off the heels of The Good Wife. Yeah. And that didn't, I don't think that got picked up for a second season. I or think maybe they did didn't two. Get, they did two. Yeah. Oh, so maybe you got one, you got one more. Oh, shush sh shit. <laughs> you, oh, God. Are you the type of person who, in a moment of excitement where everybody is celebrating, you don't really know how to how to do that? Like if I'm the center of attention, no. Okay. Otherwise, if some other people, I'll up and I'll, I'll go oh, higher. Even. <laughs> I'm I'm quite. You're competitive about <laughs> who has the most joy. I will try to have the most joy. <laughs> yes. One more. Hey. Hi. Your last two series, Westworld and Now Evil, are involved either with supernatural or sci-fi. What are your perspectives on them? In other words, do you think? They're real, that yeah. something like Westworld can happen, that there is supernatural out there? Um, well, I think I'm pretty I'm pretty close to my character on evil. I, I tend to look at things from uh, a scientific, psychological perspective. I don't believe in demonic possession. Um, as far as Westworld, I mean, there's all these theories about us living in a simulation, right? That somebody is controlling that this is all just a project and to try to figure out how, how we operate. Um, I believe that. Do you? In you and way. Elon Musk, because there's in a- In a way. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's like the Matrix necessarily, but I think that we are at a certain point have reached a pinnacle of Western civilization and culture and are sort of recreating that for the purposes of a cycle in, in some ways. Well, there we go. See, I find that terrifying. I don't not so believe do I. that, but it's really frightening. I can't even really, if we really think about that, I don't know what to do. Am I, I, I don't know. Are we going to continue, or should we just drop the mic right now? I don't know. Drop yeah. the mic. Mic drop. <laughs> mic drop. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this has been fun. Yeah. It's nice talking to you, because I love the show. Thank you so much. Uh, it is called Evil. It is on CBS, 10 p.m. Which night? Thursdays. Thursday nights. Obviously. Obviously. Why? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Katja Herbers, everybody. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you.